Welcome to 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews, where we take random movies from Metacritic's 15K Plus Movies to randomly watch whether we like it or not. Hello and welcome to episode 43 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. This is Colin. And this is Noel. And this is Random Movie 3059 in Metacritic's all-time list. It is The Blind Swordsman, colon, Zatwichi. Zatwichi. It's uh, from 2003. It runs for 116 minutes. It's got a Metascore of 75 and a user score of 7.2. Box office worldwide was 32.3 million, which I think is probably a successful movie for Japanese release mm -hmm. in Japan with, with subtitles. The uh, nutshell summary is director Takeshi Kitano takes on Japanese cinematic legend Zatochi. Kitano stars the blind wanderer with a distinctive red cane and a shock of platinum blonde ha hair. Softly spoken, he makes a living as a masseur and by gambling, but his humble, shuffling facade makes uh, masks a lightning fast, deadly swordsman. So did, you, did you overall enjoy Zatochi? Uh, I, yeah, yes, I did. Um, yeah, but that might be a very strong word to use. Um, it, it was, it wasn't painful. Uh, there, there were elements of this movie I really enjoyed, and there were elements of this movie that really irked me. Yeah, well, let's let's bring out the elephant in the room and the most st horrendously stupid production choice. Oh, the 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 CGI blood squirts. Yeah, and the fact that the swords were just faked coming through the bodies and were like yeah, shaking yeah, yeah. shaking well the well it just it was just lended itself to a not it's not real this isn't real and the it bloods... did it didn't need to be or if you were going to go that hard into cgi you you want to comic book it up uh but it doesn't it didn't need that i think practical effects probably would have been cheaper would have been much more effective I I I I don't get that choice. I really don't. It it it, it annoyed me straight away because it starts off with this straight away. Yeah, yeah. We we meet Satrichi sitting by the side of the road doing his usual sighing and <laughs> oh, <I'm> blind, <laughs> still blind. It's oh still... God, I'm still blind. Yeah. <laughs> so he's uh, he's resting on the side of the road, and a bunch of hooligans come up and. The little boy comes over to them and they go, "Yo, take his cane away from him." And we'll give you give you a couple of quid if you yeah knock his cane and steal it. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. We'll teach him. So of course, Atrici lets the little kid take it anyway. But um, of course, he it's a little trap there, you know. He's like, "Oh," and the hoodlums come over and go, "Yo, even a kid can take your cane away from you." you even a master is powerless without his sword, you jerk. Yeah. Oh, fatal last words. It's a nice little introduction because that tweet she just breaks the guy's ankle. Go. Bit yeah. of a Husser the bone woman there. <laughs> stabby, stabby, stabby. Yeah, so lots of several stabs. Are dead. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's a guy just running away. Um, but yeah, we we begin the whole movie with the whole fake blood, CGI blood, and yeah, it was a production choice. He did he did say it. Um, the dude, uh, Kata uh, Takeshi Kitano, who, who starred in it and directed this, uh, he basically said, yeah, I, I, there's going to be a lot of violence, so I wanted this to be like a blooming flower on the screen. I, I get that, but if you look at uh, uh, well, um, Kill Bill. Yeah, which I was. Practical yeah. effects, blooming yeah. flower of blood. Beautiful in it disturbing kind of way but beautifully done uh this and is, real yes absolutely real and it, it's, it's comic book uh it, it's silly but effective and you know hits the mark this it feels fake it feels stuck on the top um i don't know it's just so incredibly fake that it just doesn't work unfortunately yeah, and we, you'll see some scenes where the um, guy who's getting stabbed, his back is to the to the camera, and then the sword will come through it, and it's just floating like in the middle of his yeah. torso. Yeah, like a uh, mem, like a like something you'd see in um, TikTok. It's just stuck on the top. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a TikTok account, everybody, if you want to follow. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So then, and you kind of, and I think you're right as well. Like if you're going to, if you're going to CGI the blood, then I want to see fountains of it. I want to see. Oh yeah. Go hard. Yeah. Just like Kill Bill where you sort of, 
it just gushes like a geezer. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we we go from that introduction scene to then we see this young young dude, uh, the Ronin for hire, basically the bodyguard for hire. He's um, chopping down some fellas, um, and then we see and quickly we then we see these uh, two geishas, the Naruto sisters, um, garroting a cleric. Um, yeah, I, I liked I liked the, the whole story arc of the geisha girls. Um, it was interesting. It was complex a little bit. Yeah, and yeah, I would good. have liked more of them, um, but um, we, we don't. We get a bit more actually, a little bit of backstory later on, which is actually kind of painful at times. But yeah, yeah. They're, two, they're two they're two good characters in the. Mm. In, there's a couple of dodgy, stupid characters in this. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> like uh, Shinkichi, the comic foil. Oh, oh yeah, or the, or, the, or the naked spearman. <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought there was going to be this a, a predictable trope where he helps. I'm really delighted that didn't happen. I have it written down here at, at the very end of the movie. I went, yes, he doesn't do anything. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't yeah. make sense that he would. And it is a trope. It's you know he comes to the rescue at the end. No, no. Thank you no. for not doing it. He's just an interesting character to have in the community. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's basically this this uh, guy dressed up in a sumo loincloth with a sign, and he wants to be a samurai, and he just runs around screaming with a with a lance or whatever the Japanese equivalent of a lance is. I'm sure there's a name for it, but big, yeah, pikey stick, pike, yeah. Um. So yeah, we see so like we see three sort of violent introductory scenes there, and you're kind of going right. Who's that guy who killed those two guys? He's got a wife as well, and she's pretty sick. So who, who, what's that all about? Then we see the sisters going, "Okay, you were the clerk of the Naruto family, so now we're killing you." Then yeah, so she he then this one of the siblings stabs him, and you see another fake bit of blood, and just spurts up in a little as if you know. Your tap in your kitchen sink just splash back at you. No, there's no gush. <laughs> there's no gushing. There's no yeah, gushing. Yeah. I want I like gushes. I, I appreciate the garroting, but the with, with the stab, <laughs> it should have been, you know, and it was an ar- arterial strike as well, so it would have gushed. Yeah. So that should have been <laughs> all over the place. Um, but no, no, just a bit of CGI. And see, that's the problem as well. When it's CGI, nobody gets blood on them. Splattered, like, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they have a few dots on them, but it's it's yeah, it's not messy. Um, so we so after all those things, we get this nice introductory sort of music thing where the hose in the fields are making the music. Yeah, I I kind of enjoyed this. I, I yeah. as it was as it was building into the the music as oil farming, I was kind of going, oh, I don't know, but the, the rhythm, something about it, kind of made me smile. Um, and. It was weird as well, though. It was weird, and I, like I think it bookends what happens at the end as well with weirdness, with a weird production well, choice. That 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 annoys me for other reasons, but we can get into that later. We'll get into that later. I thought I was watching a Bollywood movie at the end. Of exactly. The end. What, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I said, "Where's Simon Cowell to hit the red bu- big red button?" Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was strange. interesting. Yeah, it was strange. Uh, uh, I'll say it now. In fact, we've mentioned it. Um, you've opened that door. Yeah. I was surprised by the amount of money they must have spent on the choreography for that. Where yeah. that money could have been spent on practical effects and a bit more fight scene choreography. If yeah. I'm honest. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's. Um, I thought the, the the music at the end was catchy, and but it was it was just a bit weird. It didn't fit right into the whole no, scope. It, this this is a this isn't this isn't a movie with funky songs. It's not supposed to be. It, it's 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 a period piece set what eighteen fifties in the Edo um, shogun shogunate. Yeah. What's that got to do with Bollywood? Yeah, I felt like Slumdog Millionaire at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the train station. <laughs> Um, but yeah, back to the intro. Like I, I did like that hose making hose making music. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a, that's a title of an amazing movie right there. <laughs> <laughs> you hose making music. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, Satrichi has made his way from killing a few dudes, hoodlums on the road. He's helping Aunt Uwemi uh, with her mm. veggies coming home, and 
he's a he's an interesting character and i didn't really think i was going to like him the way he's been portrayed by takeshi because he was just giggling weirdly and, and muttering you know and it's like but i grew to like that during it's the same movie. as and it's weird because there's very little to his character but it's yeah it's, it's kind of it's kind of subtle and it kind of as you say it kind of grows on you a bit it does it was just a little bit I don't know, strange at the start. It's like, are you going to, can you talk? Are you blind and mute? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it didn't feel yeah. a bit like that. Yeah. So we head back to the, um, to the, to the Ronin for hire dude. He's, he's in a room with his, um, I thought I, at this point I thought they might've been just siblings, sister and brother, but it's his wife and she's sick and he's like going, I have to do, if I'm going to have to do some work, I have to do some official work. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a skilled yeah. Ronin, you know, so. Um, to to me, if I was him with those skill sets, um, instead of working for a bunch of jerks, I would have just killed them all, take the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he didn't. He wasn't too, you know, shy of just killing people left, right, and center. So yeah, he could. Yeah, just... regardless of whether or not they deserved it, he did it for money. Uh, why not yeah. just kill the guys that paid you to kill some guys uh, and know they were bad guys in the first place? Yeah, and you could have paid for some, you know, whatever. Medicine. Straight medicine. away for your yeah. wife who needs it now. <laughs> yeah, quite quite seriously, she needs not, not, something. Not six months down the line. <laughs> no, no. Uh, so he heads to, he to the pub, and the pub is a very central um, thing mm, to the... It certainly the, is. To the... Um, and I actually called it, actually. I, 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 I called something during this. I said, the old man behind the counter is a little bit interesting. He's going to be something. I don't. I didn't know he was going to be what he was, but I thought he was something. There was something extra to him. Uh, yeah. But anyway, we got there. Anyway, he's in the pub and he goes, "Yo, um, can you tell that gang boss here, you know, um, that I'm available for hire to?" Um... Oh no! He, what does he do? He slices the sake for yeah. The there's, pub. there's a couple of lads coming in doing a bit of a protection job on the on, on the pub on the sake pub. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He interrupts their shakedown uh, by chopping one of the lads' sake bottles in half and saying, yeah. "Run for her, buddy. Uh, go tell your boss." Yeah, hurry up! And they all run out screaming <laughs> comically. Yeah. So boss comes in and he says, "All right, show me your skills." And he he goes. <laughs> You know, and he sees his rope is, uh, is on his sash is like broken. He's like, oh. That's interesting. He says, Look down. The sword is in between his toes. I don't know how he didn't spot that. Yeah, yeah. At least all his toes were there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine if you looked down and his toe was gone. <laughs> oh, my foot. It's gone. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you're hired? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know whether I should be hiring you or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Again, interesting. Um, it 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 didn't really show anything happening other than. Whoosh, whoosh. Again, yeah. I would have liked a little bit of choreography here, a little bit of uh, something swordsmanship. Yeah. yeah, you're right. A lot of the a lot of the fight scenes lacked a bit of uh, production, a lot of planning, a little bit of planning to it. Like even at the end, when Ronan for hire and Sato's face off, it's like it's in, it's it's quite clever the way it's done, but uh, it lasts it's like a second. Over too quick because it's been building up. It really has. It's been building up the whole way through the movie, and you know there's going to be like it's obvious. The first twenty seconds after the first scene's over and the Ronan pops up you know they're going to meet and it's going to be a fight. So I, even though it's a trope, I want it to be, you know, I want it to be good. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's been built up. Give me give me what I want, God dang it. Yeah, even at the end of like Kill Bill 2 when, uh, yeah. when the bride meets Bill, there's a bit of a fight, but then it's, it's, it is actually a little bit quick, you know, the, the three, the three hit heart thingy. Yeah, but that, that was kind of, built up throughout the movie two movies as well because that that yeah. move had been discussed and you know the relationship she had with her sensei had been built up so at least there was substance to why it ended so quick yeah they do meet once and uh it doesn't happen in, just in quite yet in the pub yeah the pub it's like the rovers return from uh <laughs> coronation Every, street everything happens in the pub yeah um anyway we head back um Zato is actually he's set up shop with Aunt 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 Oemi and she, he's uh, he's just chopping logs and throwing logs into the into a pile like behind him like an engine. Just he can do anything with his eyes closed, basically. 
Um, we get sort of a backstory that the Ginzo boss, he wants to uh, off the other two clans, and that's a running theme throughout where the two clans get um, knocked off, so supposedly, throughout the throughout the movie. Yeah. Um, yep. The yelling sumo man pops up here, the comic relief guy that we, we say we told you about earlier. He's running around Aunt Wamey's Aunt, Aunt Wamey's house and just screaming. He's yeah, he's a backer. He's an idiot. Yeah. Backerdess. Backerdess. And, 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 and what I like is he's not in it for very long. It, it doesn't really go into him being an idiot or anything like that. He's just an incidental character. They kind of like him. So he's left to let, left alone. He's not picked on by the bad guys. He's not picked on by the good guys. Good. Yeah. Um, but he's incidental. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, he's an, he's an interesting character to be in there. Just running around. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah, then Anto Amy, then describes his her nephew as a yes as a gambling dude and it was an interesting fade in when she's talking about his gambling because he's there gambling when she's talking like sort of this semi fade in mm. that never really fully fades in so it's another sort of interesting production choice when she's telling um zato about i, I kind of like that to be honest well, it's it was fine nice and subtle yeah um not as bad as some of the other production choices yeah um uh what uh, what else happens then because that was saying yeah i'm gonna gonna head back head out and get some sake and yeah so it. this is where ronan mr ronan and ichi uh, i gonna i call him ichi because i, I googled the name of the movie because ichi is yeah. his name and zato zato so, no ichi would actually be um ichi the uh, masseuse or ichi the lowest cast blind yeah thing Mijigi. Yeah, uh, but his name name's Ichi. So I, I I've written down Ronan and Ichi meet in the pub and they size each other up for the first time. But before this happens, an important thing happens. Um, both guys have asked for sake and uh, pops. The old old man behind the bar is sent down with a new bottle to each guy. Mm-hmm. Gives it to Ronan. Gives it to um, Ichi. But in the process of giving it to Ichi, he kicks over Ichi's cane. Yeah. And picks it up. Uh, and this is where we find out that it's a sword. And then Ronan's like, ooh. Yeah. Before this, Ronan, um, we see, see we see him killing a couple of people. The car, yeah. the, car, the cart, I think, in the... in the. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, the, the so, other family that needs to be knocked off. So that Yeah. The, yeah, the first Big clan, boss. basically. Yeah, yeah. Easily so, done. Yeah, he's very easily done. And um, it's interesting to note that because uh, Ichi, as we'll call him from now on, he um, he says, I smell blood on you when they meet. Yeah, yeah, basically. yeah. So just, just describe the drawing of swords here because it basically determines the uh, end fight. It, it shows like, the, the gulf and skills between the two lads as well. But um, as... The Ronin is pulling his sword from its scabbard. Uh, Ichi already has his blade pretty much drawn across the Ronin's throat. And he says, not enough room in here to fight. And they leave it like that. Yeah. Well, yeah, he, he's basically looking, he's basically criticizing the way he pulls out his sword because Ichi has it basically vertically opening up and the Ronin... Yep. Uh, Hattori is his name, the Ronin. Yeah, we're uh, going to pull it, pull it out from his body to fight. Yeah, horizontally st- out. Not nearly enough distance. No. So uh, that's interesting to note because that's, that's um, you can see at the end when they face off each other, his thinking when he sees his, uh, yep. his, uh, his it, Ichi pulling his uh, sword out. Anyway, um, wifey's not happy that uh, Ronin is doing some killing. Nope, she ain't. No, is this uh, for me? <coughs> <laughs> yeah um so then we have a flashback then to hattori training and uh he um he's training with some dude and he, the dude, dude is just, with a wooden sword yeah dude with a wooden sword and he pretty he, the dude with a wooden sword is just pretty much beating the shit out of everybody all of the students all of the um ronin students and then we just flash back to not current day but i think it's maybe a few years prior maybe he goes to that dude oh, yeah. he goes, he goes to the, and yeah he goes yeah i'm coming here to regain my honor because you hit me in the butt with a wooden <laughs> pole <laughs> yeah 
You embarrassed yeah. me. Well, I haven't been able to live it down. Anyway, the guy is sick and he said, yeah, well, is there any honor? Go, in, in go kill- ahead. I don't really care, buddy. <laughs> yeah, any honor in just killing a sick man. So he sees the wooden pole and he kills that instead. <laughs> Gotta kill something. Yeah, all right. Have that, you inanimate object. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he, he's a bit of a doofus. This Actually, the, the one thing annoyed me, uh, and I, it annoys me in many of the movie, but um, if you're a samurai or you're a ronin, and you've put blood on your blade. You don't put it back in its scabbard with blood on it. But Mr. Ronan does that twice in this movie. You put it back in the scabbard with blood. You're lining the scabbard with blood. And you're leaving blood on your blade. It's going to get it, crusty. It'll get crusty. <laughs> and these blades are really precise. You don't want to be doing that. It like Blood is acidic, so it'll just etch. Don't stupid, do that. So if you're going to be Roman. killing people with a sword, don't do that. That's my advice. Yeah. You hear that, all you Ronin out there? <laughs> uh, all right. So we see this. Uh, we see a bit of a gambling scene here, and this is it's. A, I kind of like the gambling scenes. Yeah. So do I actually. It's, it's, yeah. it's interesting. So Ichi comes in and he just sits there. Just he, he never really he never looks. He's always looking down and away when he's in somewhere, and so. He's there listening to the dice roll because it's a simple game. It's odds and evens. So two dice in a cup and it's rolled. And so Ichi is basically using his heightened hearing senses to understand when the dice have rolled odd and the dice have rolled even. And so Shinkichi is there with him sort of yeah, trying uh, listen, to learn being from able to Being able to hear dice and where it falls is obviously daft. But this is one of the things I was more than happy to ignore the silliness of it because oh, yeah. it's actually quite a good scene yeah I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't really question this i don't think at any point actually in this movie did i go really i was like because you know what you're when you're watching a japanese yeah, movie yeah, yeah. when you're watching a japanese movie you're, you're getting you're going to get a lot of goofiness and unreal yeah. stuff but it's you've it's just got part. to accept it if you're going to watch the movie you have to take certain things as uh, yeah, fact you know you know they're, you know they're silly but let it go and just enjoy the movie type yeah thing. it's part and parcel of, the, of it all anyway he gets shinkichi who's uh, aunt oemi's nephew a bit of a few wins and they're they're outside and they're looking in at the the geishas for hire and the two siblings come up to him and go yo you want to good time Fancy you're a good party time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we, we cut the two to guys a... are like yeah sure why not and each is like sure yeah he's like hmm yeah hmm well he, <laughs> he knows something's up oh he always does he's always two steps ahead so he's um so it cuts to a scene where some idiot clown is doing some stupid scene that annoyed me actually it was just so annoying just <laughs> just yeah, him yes. yeah me. yeah so um they're down and they're like going oh would you like us to dance and sing for you and then she's got a sword in her uh, lute or whatever the Japanese instrument is. It's a Japanese lute, I'll, I'll say, for for this. So she kind of, she twangs the strings of this a little to um, to get the, the sword out. And Ichi goes, oh. Why are, you, why are you releasing the tension on your strings? And then she's like, uh, what? <laughs> how, did you, how, did, how do you know that, you blind fecker? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, something like, and you're not a woman. And all the audience goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So one of the siblings is a boy. And then, so basically then she's like going, well, you're not going to believe our story, but here's our backstory. And I actually like the backstory scene. Same it's, here. Uh, I think it's, it's well played. It, it, it's kind of, you know, it's a bit difficult to watch kids in a bad situation. Yeah. And it is a particularly bad situation that they go through. It did remind me of uh, the scene in uh, Kill Bill where it turns into anime. and Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what I was thinking while watching it as well. Yeah. I can't remember this, the schoolgirl's character's name in Kill Bill, but it's her backstory. Same theory. Or, or, or no, Ichu or something like that, I can't remember. That, that was the... Um... No, that's uh, Lucy Liu, Orinichi. Yeah, yeah, Orinichi, sorry, yes. Yeah. Uh, that was her, wasn't it? That was, no, that's Lucy Liu. That's the, uh, the head who gets her head scalped in... Yeah, yeah, I thought that's that. That was the backstory of her, how she became an assassin. Oh, oh, is that? Oh, was that her? I thought that was the schoolgirl character with the spiky. No, no, cha- no, that was chamber. that was her. Well, I I could be wrong. I'll have to rewatch to be sure. God, we suck. Who the fuck? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's... yeah. Because she was the daughter of a GI and uh, um, 
it was Japanese. Yeah, Japanese, half Japanese, yeah, half yeah, Indian. Yeah. And Chinese and that, heritage too. Yeah, so that was her heritage. Uh, she's half Chinese, half Japanese, as the, um, I think it's Riza or the song goes. It's one of the songs in the <laughs> yeah. soundtrack. Or Anichi, half Chinese, half Japanese. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that reminded me of it. It's good. Basically, yeah, the, her, the, the siblings uh, hide under, uh, are feeding a little white mouse under the house and the uh, clans. Yeah, that saves their lives. Um, yeah. The clans that are in the in this little village that they're in right now are the ones that killed their mum and dad and all the rest of the staff, basically. One of the clerics that they killed at the start of the movie let them in, opened the door. So that, so we kind of, we loop that, we kind of do a full circle of that and we're like going, okay, that's at loose end, tied up, that's fine. Yeah, so their, their, their backstory is revenge and they're just about revenge. And, and revenge. the last 10, 15 years revenge which i get yeah me. and revenge is a, is a good strong backstory for any movie you yeah. can't really go wrong with it so uh what else have we got here so um we've got then oh yeah we've got <laughs> we've got shinkichi trying to listen to the dice <laughs> yeah. bro um, yeah failing miserably yeah um, we've got the uh, the clan kicking the woman out of her inn, saying, "Yeah, you've got three days." So there's tension wrapping up, ramping up in this town. Like these clans are nothing, are no good people, basically. Yeah, they're jerks. Yeah, they so deserve some ichi justice. That's what they deserve. Yeah, and they're going to get it. <laughs> um, so the bro insists now. Geishas are uh, in the pub and they're looking for work. Say, hey, can you get Mister OG and Lord Sakai to? if they want some geishas and they go oh yes let's do that so then we've got this sort of um cool scene where the two the the brother who is actually the dancer is dancing and uh, shinkichi and I- ichi are <laughs> gambling and there's sort yeah. of a blend between the two scenes and i think that was that was quite it's uh, very good. well done actually yeah yeah um yeah, so then the, uh, oh yeah, so then, yeah, that's the whole big uh, shit show at the gambling place, isn't it? Ichi goes nuts and yeah, chops um, his arm off. Because they're getting a bit sick of Ichi winning, so they decide to change dice mid-tro. Uh, but Ichi, he's like, eh, those dice don't sound the same as the ones you put in originally. Why did you uh, change that? Yeah. yeah, and then they start shouting, and Ichi's like, Nah, I'm not shouting back. I'm just going to chop you up. Yeah, so he chops off the dice roller's arm digitally, and digitally, it looks terrible. Yeah. yeah. And then he kills a lot more people in there too. But it was a very good scene. I thought it was quite good, apart from the CGI blood and stuff. This is what he, I think he chops a candle, so it, it, the light goes out. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. he already had massive advantage because he's, he's, a, he's a god dang ninja. Uh But now nobody can see, apart from him. And they're all screaming and running around with swords, and he's just killing them all. Yeah, that's a good scene. And in the meantime, the brother, bro and si- the one, the Mister Lord Saka is like going to the brother. Yeah, let's get out of here. I need to uh, take you with me now. And sister's going. No, that's not going to happen. So uh, slaps Mister OG or hits him across the hits him across the face with her massive plectrum. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dead plectrum. Yeah. Uh, so they all they all get out of there and they all just run to um, Aunt Oemi's home during the the rain soaked night which uh sometimes you could tell that the rain was digital as well yeah. <laughs> during some of the scenes especially the, the next day it's still raining and um uh, mr nephew goes out with the umbrella oh with the umbrella it's just so it's not raining animated it's not raining no it's not raining yeah it's yeah it was bad um got a watering can over his head would have done the same job <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which i probably think they were doing some at some point um so then the yeah the Ginzo boss they know where they are and they know who they are and oh yeah they're the um, Naruto sisters and Oichi that blind Masuro guy must be Zatoichi um, yeah. but hey let's not go after them now we're let's get the Funahachi gang first that's what the Ginzo boss says um, yeah that, you know in terms of priority you go for the one that's existential <laughs> yeah that's yeah. silly silly move buddy yeah. So then we have um, a rain fight sequence, which is the Ronin. 
Yeah, he just tells everybody to, you guys sit back. This is mine. I got this. And he just takes the other clan to pieces, uh, yeah. which is a nice piece of choreography. Uh, oh, it's terrible, though. The CGI, when he when he pushes through the bamboo stick and his thumb falls oh, listen, off. That's... Ugh. It was terrible. That's because, like, the, the CGI wasn't needed because you can have practical effects to the exact same thing. The guys can clearly move a little bit anyway with a bit of choreography. Why not just leave it with that? You know, make it real. Yeah, please, please make it real. Please, sir. <laughs> um, or spend more money on your CGI. <laughs> yeah, but even that, it's like you've got a great idea for to put the sword or to cut the sword yeah. halfway through and the, the practical, bamboo stick. The practical effect is almost fully done. Yeah, and then he just decides, oh, no, I'm just going to put it through the hand as well. It just looks terrible. It's, it's it does, so bad. It does. Uh, oh, in between this, um, they painted eyes on Zwatui Chi, and he looked funny. <laughs> I did find that a humorous one. That was funny. Right? That was funny. Uh, um, That's how they, he... sn- they snuck out of town, because oh, he's got eyes. Clearly not a bad man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And they didn't even have to show it to him anyway, because he was hidden. Yeah. But um, we have another sibling flashback here to, to tell their story after they left their family and had to go around, and the brother had to go in for some he was dodgy tricks. dealings yeah it was terrible and, and it wasn't very nice no no it was it was not it was not good i, I actually to be honest i thought the scene was well shot i thought it, it, it was quite poignant so i uh, yeah it well, was very it was very good because they split the dance when he was a boy yes. to the dance today when he was practicing in, in aunt oemi's house so that was very good because and even the splicing between it were really dead on it was like the exact body and posture. you really feel sorry for the the man slash boy in in, in that one scene because yeah. the things he's had to go through in his life to achieve well to keep him and his sister alive and to make the dream of getting revenge alive as well so it's a tough one yeah absolutely um so yeah um yeah so that's this is when shakiti takes a walk i don't know where the hell he he, does he he doesn't doesn't go anywhere he says he's gonna he's gonna enter town to see what this what's going on uh but i thought he was gonna like i thought that would have led into a kidnappy type situation because he's a bumbling idiot he's always gonna get caught uh and the crime boss is looking for him and they know who he is yeah but nothing comes from it he just danders back a few minutes later yeah i don't know i don't know what the whole point of that was and then we have another scene where this other sort of temporary gambling place gets a visit by the the ginzo gang and um there uh ronan kind of fucks them yeah. up right no that this is where they is basically they this is before the, the that gang gets wiped out um and this is yeah the, basically saying we want to stand up fight with you guys um so they smash and absolutely destroy the the ginzo peeps because they're crap and they didn't bring the um one good guy that they have can fight mr ronan chap yeah so that sets up the face off between the two yeah and ginzo wins and funahachi loses yep one nil then we have a really thick a scene that should be cut out of the movie. It's with Shinkichi doing a comic relief combat training with three idiots, and they just bash him over the head with sticks. I know. It reminded me a little bit of, what was that movie? Um, God, the Kung Fu... Panda? Oh. <laughs> no, not that bad. Um, Shaolin Kung Fu? Shaolin. No, Shaolin. No, not that good. Um, yeah. There was a, there was a, a piss take kung fu movie years ago with him fighting a cow and stuff just ridiculous stupid doesn't need to be done anyway I, I, it'll come to me um but it, it just it was a waste of five minutes yeah yeah it was it was did and it didn't have any um extra sort of impact on the rest of the movie those three guys did not get trained and didn't play any part in solving the issue of getting the clan out of the town yeah, so the okay. siblings siblings go back to the pub and want to say sorry to OG, and basically they tell everything to the barman, like where they are, who they are. Yeah. It's like that's so weird. So then, um, oh yeah, Ichi's up in uh, the aunt's house there. So if you want to yeah. go say hello, and like, guess like, oh come on, guys, really? You've been, you've survived fifteen years. 
playing your trade as a, basically as assassins and you just tell everybody everything. That's <laughs> a mistake. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So um, that sort of gang heads out there and burns down um, Enter Wemi's house, naturally. I thought they were going to kill him. I don't know why they didn't kill him. Yeah, I, I don't get that either. Um, it would have been definitely their MO, like, you know. Um... Yeah. Um, before this, Satrichi headed back into town. It was like, all right, we're probably going to have to sort things out here. He um, smells, he stops, smells the burning, keeps going. I thought he was going to go back, but he's, he, he keeps going. He's on puts a back. Yeah, he puts back the scarecrow, which yeah, a... I I I never like the, the scarecrow straw scarecrow pops up several times and kids playing it with and stuff like that. But I don't really yeah. get. Yeah, re- I, I might be missing something. Um, you are missing we... a little something because in Japanese folklore and culture, the um, the scarecrow is a symbol of guardianship. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that would fit in with Mister Ichi because that's exactly what he is. Effectively, yeah, he just exactly. turns up and protects everybody. Yeah, so they're um, yeah, yeah it, fits, it fits right in with the next scene. Yeah, the two, ge- two geisha like, girls who are over in Ogie's um, house have been found out, and they've now been surrounded by like forty uh, uh, goons, goons, hired goons, hired goons. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So I think that I think there's a symbolism in them putting back up the scare. Of course, I guess yeah. guardians in town, motherfuckers. You know, my buddies Oi. need me. Uh, yeah. Yep, the the two ge- geisha are about to be run through with about twenty swords. Yeah, and, uh, and as one guy goes to stick the blade in, a blade comes through a wooden fence and kills him instead. Yeah, and then quite definitely just pops up to undo the latch, undo yeah. the wooden beam. <laughs> I, I like that. I really like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So he kicked ass, and it's a good scene actually. He he just kills everybody, and again. He, there's no no uh, competition. He's he just he does. Oh, it. it's easy. It really is easy. And uh, he never once. He's he's kind of like I, I haven't really seen One Punch Man, but he, in this he's like he's a, no one even comes close. Ronan no. scratches him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He does at the end. It's coming up. The end is coming up. Yeah. The um, yeah. This next scene, the bodyguard, the Ronan's wife is at home doing something, and I was like going, hmm, what the hell is she doing? A small little blade. Yeah. And she's got a band around her waist uh oh yeah prepping herself so then we see it's Zato and Ron, the Ronan and Hattori on the beach they're ready big bonfire f- big bonfire so here's the deal here's what happens they're quite near to each other um, Zato Ichi opens his sword a little bit just like what he did in the pub and you can see Hattori's face going oh I know how he's going to swipe now uh, and it just kind of flashes back a little bit to the pub. And so it's saying, like, okay. But then Ichi changes his angle a little bit and he goes, huh? And you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. It's over. Yeah. So, yeah. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Yeah. Next scene, his wife kills herself as well as if she knew, yeah, he's dead. He's not coming back. Yep. Yep. Um, then, yeah. So one of the other clan the head dude, I can't remember, is Mr. Oji or something. He's dead in the water or something as well. Yeah, Oji's dead in the water. Yeah. Didn't, didn't actually the... get to see him die. Uh, no, I don't know how he it. died. He died of exposure or something overnight. I don't know. <laughs> Heart attack. Yeah. God knows. So, and Sato's okay. Or Ichi is okay because he's a bandage on his shoulder. He's smiling whimsically, sitting on a bed um, in the next scene. Yeah. Then we have the and then we have the next musical um, number where the construction workers are beating out a tune to the song, building up Aunt Wamey's house again. So that's quite nice as well. And then there's four of them sitting on a bench just discussing, you know, chatting away. and stuff like that. Here's where I write down: Would you actually help the guys rebuilding your house, you lazy fuckers? <laughs> no, because there's roles for people, and they're probably the the bloody leaders of the town now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get to work. They're the new gang boss members. Yeah, get to uh, work. So, you know, I've, the, the four of them, so the two siblings, brother and sister, Shinkichi and uh, Antoemi, they're all there, happy, and uh, Zato Ichi's off again. He's gone. He's done. So he's wandering around, and these ninjas oh, just pop out of nowhere. <laughs> the sand ninjas, as they were. Sand about. ninjas. <laughs> so buried in the ground somehow, and then yeah. suddenly they spring up. But Ichi's got them, you know. He's like, "Oh yeah, chop, chop, chop." Yeah, get get back down, you lazy feckers. Yeah, all of the ninjas come and 
blah. So then, so just to let people know, there's two people that worked behind the bar, um, a middle-aged dude, let's say, and his elderly dad, was it? Or it was supposed to be his dad no, or just he, a worker? His, the story he gave was that he was some guy he found on the street. Uh, and he yeah. took him in. Now, but that gets kind of reversed in a couple of seconds. It does, it does. So the middle-aged dude is one of the ninjas? Yeah, he is, isn't he? No, no he's just he's just a homeless guy that uh, the uh, the boss man took in. Yeah, I know, but he comes. He's he's there. In the, he's there in, in, in the street. Uh, with he's there Ichi. in the street. So the he ninjas says, are kind of protecting him. Yeah, so he's there with Ichi. When all the ninjas die, this middle aged dude behind the bar is standing there, going, "How did you know I was the Kuchinawa boss?" And he was like, "Yeah, the minute." I met you, I could smell you or something. What did he say? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, I, I wrote down what he says to the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but at this point, Z- Zatoichi opens his eyes and he's got these beautiful um, Kurt Lazarus from <laughs> Tropic Thun. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they're like. They're mad blue eyes. Um, uh, like, like Almost like they're glowing. Uh, what's the name of that fake movie with Tobey Maguire? In the, the Devil's Alley. De- the Devil's Alley. Abbey. <laughs> Abbey. Or, Alley, yeah. Alley. Is it Alley or Abbey? I thought it was Abbey. It has an Alley as in the reference to the back end, you know. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Anyway, he opens his eyes and hey, he does. he's not blind. He just closes his eyes a lot. Yeah. Um. So anyway, he it's kills just... him. <laughs> kills then, him. But wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. He goes to the bar and the old bar guy is there. Old, the oldest bar guy is there and go... And he goes, How did you yeah, it's know? me. <laughs> How did you know? And then he references back to that scene where he knocks over the cane. Yeah. And he's just like, I knew you what you were doing. You know, you don't fool me, buddy. I got your, the cut of your jib. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then he just chops him in half. Hey. No, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't. No, it's the guy before he, he slices up. Yeah, yeah, he just decides, no, I'm not going to kill you, buddy. Uh, I'm just going to take your eyes out. Yeah. How do you like those plan. apples? Huh? Yeah. I like those peepers. <laughs> so, yeah, he, uh, he just swipes and blinds his eyes. Boom. Then we go on to the, the Bollywood scene, which gets turned up to 11. Right. So, yeah. So, basically, just quickly after that, there's a bunch of people on a stage dancing to drums. So, they're, all, they're already dancing. But it, it's almost it's it's Bollywood light because that that kicks off before Pops gets killed. So it's, it's kind of segues into that, which is really weird. Uh, but then it goes back to the right. Okay, the main bad guy's dead now. Bollywood, all the way up to eleven <laughs> for some reason. Yeah, they go hard. They really go hard. And this was released in 2003. I don't know when Slumdog Millionaire was released. Maybe they I, really should. I suspect mm. just after or before. <laughs> like, you know, it, it, maybe leaning on that a little bit. Yeah. So um, that's not the end of uh, Zatoichi's. Uh, <laughs> there's, some, there's a weird <laughs> scene at the end. I don't know how I feel about this weird scene. That's um, so weird. It's like a few seconds long. It's basically we see Zatoichi's face and... Surprise look at walking. his face. <laughs> a surprise look in his face and it freeze frames on us. We, we see a close up of a rock on the ground and his eyes are open. And yep. um, even with my eyes wide open, I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> boom. <laughs> the end. That's it. Yeah. Thank, thankfully, you remember that line because I forgot <laughs> what it was fully. But yeah, he basically just freeze frames on, on his, um, his stupefied face. Ooh. Huh? The first, thing we, the, the first thing that catches him out is a stone in the road. Yeah, but then we go back to the Bollywood, and it goes it goes even harder, right? It's, yeah. It doesn't end on his face; it ends Out on of, Bollywood. As far as I can tell, the Bollywood dance is still going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> twenty four hours later. Yeah, it was it was interesting the way they ended it off. Yeah, I don't know. it it feels thematically weird. It doesn't fit, you know, like a, what is a period movie like from eighteen fifty. It's not set in India. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting and silly choice, maybe. Like, it was kind of catchy, but, like, I, I don't really yeah, need it. Yeah, it's catchy, but it, catchy in the right movie. Like, it's... <sighs> yes, if it, was in, if it was one of the songs in Slumdog Millionaire, I'd be like, you know, clicking my... Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. 
It's like if all the cowboys at the end of the good and the bad and the ugly just <laughs> did a hold down, you know? A... <laughs> exactly, yeah. You got a pretty reasonably serious movie with a bit a couple of silly little things, I suppose, through it. Yeah. And then yeah. And then the end of um what was that Mel Brooks movie set in the West? Blazing Saddles. It's the end of Blazing Blazing Saddles. That's what I think this is. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's not it's... but it's not a comedy movie, so it doesn't fit. No. No, no, it's, and I guess it's supposed to be a sort of celebration of, okay, the clans are all dead, blah, 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 we're a happy village now, so here's a dancing song number, whatever, it was yeah, weird. That, that celebration should be like a kabuki play, or kabuki play, like, not, not mm. Bollywood. Yeah, yeah, it's clearly a Japanese movie, with Japanese symbology and themes and historical characters yeah we don't need a sort of dance that just tap dancing a lot they wear too <laughs> tap dancing yeah Come it's on. a bit of river dance as well like at this times <laughs> cultural appropriation there buddy <laughs> here's <laughs> michael flatley <laughs> in a kimono let's go oh god <laughs> All right, so I, I I gave the plot two point seven five out of five. I I enjoyed this movie actually. I you know for all its for all the flaws I I noticed I I enjoyed it. That nearly two hours went by quite quickly for me. Yeah, yeah. I I put it down as three actually. Um, I, I had it as, as three. We dis- as yeah, we were I discussing it, it I um I marked it up um, because I, no, <laughs> I did no. the opposite. <laughs> Because I had it a, a little bit lower, and I was thinking, actually, I did enjoy this movie. And as I talked about it, yes, I enjoyed this movie. Yes, there were some stupid bits to it, yeah. But the story itself is solid. Yeah, I um, it's above average for me. I, I I had it at three, and then when we were talking, I put it down at 2.75, just because I think there's a lot more three-rated movies that would be better, I quite think. Quite possibly, quite possibly. Yeah. I, I think it's the geisha bit was interesting to me i maybe that story by itself would have got a bit more i don't know um yeah that would be good that would be a good um side movie to get those two as main characters but i was looking at their there's they've, they've done no other movies like that imdb can see anyway was, Takeshi has done a lot actually um and yeah, one done... movie that people well there's two movies that people might know him from ghost in the shell the most recent hollywood version of it uh he's yeah. the boss man in that and uh, Battle Royale. Mm. Yeah, the original which one, I, right? Yeah, yeah, which I absolutely love. And he's the Takeshi from Takeshi's Castle. Do you know Takeshi's Castle? The jumping around the place, silly yeah. Japanese yeah. thing. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. He's Takeshi. Yes. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I was shocked too. I missed that. How the hell did I miss that? Oh my God. I don't know. Takeshi. I love that show. Yeah, and I actually, I, I, it's so funny. And they did a remake, re- reboot of it on Netflix, and I watched a couple of episodes. Of course, it's modernized and it's a bit more shitty, but he turns up, he comes, he comes in as Takeshi for a couple of episodes or for one episode, and it's like, huh, interesting. That. That's wow! I didn't know. I didn't know the Takeshi and Takeshi was called Takeshi. <laughs> I exactly knew did I until last night when I read it. <laughs> oh my um, god! Hator, yeah. uh, the, uh, the actor who plays Hattori was in the two Thor movies. He uh, was, yeah, as a bit of a nobody character. Yeah, Tata Nobu Asano was his name. Um, yeah, nobody else. There's a couple. A couple of the actors have done Japanese movies and stuff. I gave the acting two point five. I thought it was average. I thought it was fine. Um, uh, yeah, two point five. Yeah. There was there was some brutal acting. Um, I thought the cashier was quite good. Um, I yeah, the guy, the Ronin, was reasonably well acted, and I thought the geishas were very well acted. Everything else, maybe the ant was okay too, but everything else was slapstick. Yeah, I uh, I thought it was just bang average. I didn't think anybody stood out. Yeah, I think the the best characters uh, were the siblings. Yeah, and uh, Takeshi himself did a, did a good did good. I kind of liked his nuance. Like, I, f- as we said, the first scene was like, uh, knowing, is this how you're playing it? Knowing smile and not really saying much. The knowing smile and the sort of looking away and just the little affirmation grunts and stuff like mm. that, I thought was was quite nice. Uh, Sound Brackets track, I'm going to give three out of five because the two um, musical, not the Bollywood number, but the two sort of uh, whole hose making music in the in the field <laughs> and the construction worker music and then just there's 
there's quite a lot of abstract Japanese instrumentals throughout the movie, which sort of fitted for me. I quite, I quite liked. I quite. I, I felt it was quite appropriate the sort of music that was played I, throughout I, the movie. I mark it a bit harder because of Bollywood. It really annoyed the crap out of me. Uh, <laughs> not because it was bad song. It's just vastly inappropriate. One point yeah. five for me. That's all I can give it because that oh. was just so off the mark. Oh. Tap dance is not a Japanese celebration dance. <laughs> no, no. Um, as we've talked, um, I've I had production at three. I've, I put it down to two point five because the more I thought about it, the more that the fake blood makes the movie worse and it's not a bad movie it's just that it's made it makes it an average movie with the fake blood i really wanted to see physical gushes and everybody covered in jam strawberry jam <laughs> <laughs> not raspberry jam that wouldn't look good at no, all. no no that's not good uh no I, I again um i may be a bit negative on this one because it really annoyed me from the get-go uh, i put 1.5 um mm-hmm there are some good production elements in this, like the fading in, fading over and back between yeah, like, that was good. Dur- during the when you were training the dance moves, that, yeah, was, that was fantastic. Good. Yeah, but the blood, and then the umbrella scene. <laughs> There's just a couple of bits yeah. in it really drag it hard down for me. Yeah, it was noticeable. Yeah, like can you not wait for rain? Yeah, it's, it, it rains in Japan, or just get in a bloody watering can or something yeah and i read like they were they filmed it in hiroshima so it's not like they filmed it in okinawa where it doesn't rain and it's sunny all the time it's you know it rains in japan so yeah just wait for it just time your bloody movie <laughs> shot uh, yeah and there wasn't that much that had to be shot in the rain so why not just wait for those particular scenes to be shot on one rainy day yeah well we'll never know he was probably rushing to make Takeshi's castle season 25 (laughs) or something. (laughs) All right. um, Okay. So uh, David Adelstein and Slate gave the movie 50 out of a hundred. He says, he says what saves that is that it ends for no clear reason with a foot stomping ensemble dance number that is both delightful and unhinging. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It sends you home with spasmodic giggles convinced this Japanese imp has discovered a new path to your unconscious, which it's sort of a weird review. Yep. Um, Mick Michael Wilmington in the Chicago Tribune gave it a hundred. <laughs> yeah, a masterpiece of wry violence and stylized mayhem. The blind swordsman turns loose one of Japan's most brilliant film auteurs, Takeshi Kitano, on one of its most enduring pop legends. So yeah, there's a big total series of animes for about yeah, yeah, Satoichi, yeah. and yeah, he's a big character. So yeah, that's um, the. Uh, the reviews there for that. I think let's stick a sword in Zatrichi. We're done. Some animated blood sticking at the back of him. <laughs> yeah. And let's roll an, our randomized number for the next episode. Oh my god. 31. <laughs> 31? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, crap. Um, I don't even have to edit the, mo- the our episode now because I just went on to page number two. Uh, episode 31 is a classic that I've never, ever watched, and I'm embarrassed oh. to say so. It's Some Like It Hot. Oh, wow. Okay, I have seen this. Um, I don't think it deserved to be up in number 31. It's still a good movie. Oh, ah, well. I haven't seen it in 30 years. <laughs> it's a very short summary. When two male musicians witness a mob hit, they flee the state in an all-female band disguised as women, just like Satwichi and the sibling. Yeah. Um, but further complications set in obviously a Billy Wilder movie. Uh, it's got a meta score of 98 and a user score of 8.3. So is this the one with Marilyn Monroe in it? I think it must be. Yes, it is. It is. Mm. Yeah. It's his, it's Billy Wilder's highest rated uh, movie on Metacritic um, ahead of double indemnity, the apartment and sunset Boulevard. So it's, uh, it's definitely out there. Definitely up there with quality stuff so yeah it's got the, that's a good historical movie to get our uh, yeah. teeth into it's yeah. um interested to watch that again yeah 1959 two hours and one minute excellent okay so 
Some Like It Hot will be our episode 44. Yes, 44. Uh, please take a look at our TikTok. Follow if you're on TikTok. I don't blame you if you're not on TikTok, but uh, we're putting all our scenes, see some scenes from our movies up there that we've watched. Uh, we're all on all the audio pod- podcasts. Get some reviews and ratings in there if you haven't done so already. And we will see you on episode 44 for something like it hot. Bye bye. Cheerio.